Well, hello. It is January 3rd, 2023. It's the end of the week, but this is still Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello and welcome back. As we round out this week, we have some thoughts. Uh, We're going to finish up chapter 2 of Philippians, where Paul, uh, as we saw yesterday, was writing concerning his sending Timothy to them. Today, he's writing concerning his sending Epaphroditus back to the church at Philippi. And from this, again, we can see some characteristics of a faithful believer in Jesus Christ as a faithful servant. And so as we read the passage, think about that. How is this passage teaching me Uh, what it means to be or what it looks like to be a faithful servant of Jesus Christ. Let's look at the passage. We'll find it in Philippians 2, verses 25 through 30. Hear now the word of the Lord. I've thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy, and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen and amen. So the church at Philippi sent a message with a gift and some help via Epaphroditus to Paul while he was imprisoned in Rome. Remember, Paul was imprisoned, and though he had guards, he was allowed people to come and go uh, and to, to visit with them. So they sent the gift and Epaphroditus with them. And while Epaphroditus was in Rome, he became sick, sick to the point of almost dying. But he was a faithful servant. And let's look at the passage again, because we can, again, there's some characteristics about a faithful servant we can find as, in this passage. First, look at the very end of the passage. In verse 30, we read, Paul tells them to honor such men. Why? Because he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete was what was lacking in your service to me. The faithful servant is willing to, and to, make the sacrifices he has to in only in order to see the work of God completed. Here Epaphroditus went and and was and made a sacrifice, made a conscious decision at one point. I'm sick, but I'm here for the glory of Christ. I'm going to be faithful to the end to complete the work. He realized the sacrifice might result in the end of his life as does Paul. And, but he was willing to make that sacrifice. So the first thing is uh, that we see, first characteristic we see in the passage is that a servant of Christ is willing to make the sacrifices needed to complete the work that Christ, that God has given them to do. Look again at the passage. Well, we see the, the titles that Paul gives to him in the first part, verse. His brother, his fellow worker, his fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. Epaphroditus was more than just the guy bringing the message. He was a fellow believer who was a fellow worker in the message, but he was a fellow soldier fighting the spiritual battles all around them. He was a messenger and a minister. It was rounded out. He he basically uh, was uh, Paul's pastor, in a sense, his pastoral care pastor, if you will, to to take care of him at that time, to meet Paul's needs, but also to meet the needs of the gospel. It is not unreasonable to think that while Epaphroditus was there, he assisted Paul in reaching out to those around him, into doing the work of the church, into ministering to to his neighbors, to the maybe other cellmates or or, or uh, the the guards, whoever. But Epaphroditus was was both a, a a preacher and a pastor, but also a brother and a servant. And the good, uh, the Christian servant today is all of that also. We're not, we don't have a singular task. We may have a singular uh, task for the day, but ultimately we're to be messengers. We're to be preachers and ministers. We're to be brothers and sisters 
and to seek to glorify God in all we do. Let's look at, at the passage one more time. And we'll see that uh, uh, he was longing to be there, to be back in Philippi, we see. He had been longing to be with you all and has been distressed because he, you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only in him, but also on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. Paul and Epaphroditus both understood that as a servant, there will be times where we will be longing to be with family, to be with our church family, to be with our friends, but there's also the understanding of the necessity of the work. And when that work is done, we go back and we should all rejoice together. One of the things we, we wrestle with uh, in the church, universal, is really the celebration of the accomplishments of ministry. We're good at, at celebrating the holidays and celebrating uh, fun things, but we're not real good at celebrating the work that God's doing. Here Paul is saying Epaphroditus was near death. And he sacrificed himself and, and, and stayed there to minister and to glorify God. <clears throat> and now that he's ready to come home, celebrate with him, rejoice with him at the work that God you, did through him. He built me up. He encouraged me in my walk. He provided for me and cared for me. He ministered for me and ministered to the community around us. We should celebrate that. And in our own lives, we should celebrate the, the victories of ministry that we see uh, each day. Let's try to do a better job of that each day, celebrating what God is doing. Well, those are some thoughts on the character of a Christian uh, servant. I pray that they are helpful to you. Uh, pray about them. Seek to apply them to your lives and be, glorif and be glorifying to God. Let me close this with a word of prayer today. Father, the challenges you set before us are difficult, but Father, not unattainable, for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with my brothers and sisters today as we head into this weekend, as we go about the tasks we have, the work we have to do, the classes we have to take, whatever it may be that we are doing. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would send us forth in your strength. Father, that as we gather together on Sunday, we would be able to rejoice at the work that you have done this week and recharge and look forward to the work you have for us next week. Lord, use us in the lives of our family, our co-workers, our classmates, all of those around us in our neighborhoods. And Father, use us to reap that harvest, that harvest that is so plentiful, but the workers are few. Lord, raise up co-laborers to join us and let us reap that harvest together for your glory. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with me today. I hope today and yesterday the thoughts on what uh, the character of a Christian servant should look like is helpful. I pray that you'll be able to apply it to your lives and that you will glorify God. Join us for worship on Sunday. We begin at 1050 a.m. at 3229 McDonald Road in Virginia Beach, Virginia. We'd love to see you there. Until then, may God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you next week for some thoughts from the Word.